I'm Alan Muir. I'm the Development Director of the AGSB UK. That's a, an association that supports families in the UK living with any one of the glycogen storage diseases. So Pompe disease is one of the most aggressive glycogen storage diseases, particularly in infants where um, they've succumbed to respiratory problems very early in age and may only live up to a year. My name is George Fox, and this is a story about my son, Phoenix. Phoenix was born seemingly a happy, healthy boy who scored very well on all of his newborn screening. However, at three and a half months of age, he was diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or a thickening of the walls of the heart. Many things can cause this condition, but three months and many tests later, we found out it was Pompe disease. So exactly eight months of age, Phoenix got his first enzyme replacement therapy. And so we've been doing that ever since. Um, uh, and now he's nine years old. There really hasn't been any changes. So myozyme was great for his heart, but of course we we're looking for further, something better uh, down the road. That's the reason why we kind of went with the gene therapy, or part of the reason why we're going with whatever sort of we can find. But the gene therapy uh, was certainly something was we were very happy to see come along and became, it became when it became a reality. Carson has Pompey's because me and my husband have both got the faulty gene and we have passed it on to him. He was only seven days. He was seven days when, he, um, when we found out and uh, Carson started his first infusion on his 10th day, so which was very early. He's got Pompey's disease, but it doesn't affect him in any way. He's just like any other normal um, child that you'd get of his age, five year old. You know, he can do everything. He knows he's got something wrong with him, but he, he, does, he doesn't understand the fact what Pompey's is. And, you know, obviously he knows he needs to have the medicine every fortnight. But to the extent where, you know, it's quite a, you know, serious condition that he's got and he's had it from birth and he used to have the medicine, you know, continues his life. You know, he doesn't know that really, no. This has got something called Pompeii's disease. Um, it's a muscle weakness uh, disease. He doesn't uh, make his own um, e uh, enzymes. Oh, when they told me, I ran away. <laughs> I just left the room and I couldn't. I couldn't. Um, I couldn't hear what they were saying. Just to be told it's a terminal disease for your babies and it's horrible. Um, Jesse is absolutely my everything. He, he, well, I've been with him every second of the day since he was born. So I think that we've got a kind of special bond. When he, he, he's only got to move his eyes, I don't know what he's talking about. It, it's kind of, I love all my kids equally the same, but what I have with Jesse is. Um, it's amazing. There's no love. There's no love like it. Oh, Try not to cry. To cry. Uh, my name's Dale Whitby, and this is my wife Gemma, and um, this is our son Archie. Archie has been diagnosed with um, infantile Pompeii disease. I was in labour, um, they did an emergency caesarean because his heart rate was dipping every time I got a contraction. That then highlighted that there might be a problem um, and found that he had uh, cardiomyopathy. His heart was twice the size that it should be. So we uh, followed this group of five, six people into a room and there were two cups of water and a box of tissues and the fact that your child's been taken off of you and there's two cups of water and a box of tissues, you know that it's probably not going to be anything good. Ten years ago I had a son, Hussein, who'd uh, passed away with the Pompey's disease. Um, he was diagnosed at seven and a half months. So by that time, you know, the actual, you know, disease, it made quite a big impact in his life and the way he was. Um, yeah, so, you know, and he wasn't doing well. He passed away when he was just over a year. Having the whole 
sitting around casting but not knowing what what to actually expect or not knowing you know there's answers there's questions that I've got they can't be answered is he going to be here in four years um you know and is he ever going to reject the Mars line Enzyme therapy, I think it's helped him along really well. Um, obviously, having lost a child with Pompeys and not having the enzyme therapy, you know, you can see the difference in how he's doing and he's here today because obviously life expectancy is a year and today Carson is five. So, um, yeah, he's doing really well. We try not to get our hopes up too much because we're aware that, you know, it can change at any point. But at the moment, he's doing very well and he's improved a lot physically. Um, cognitively, he's fine anyway. So that, that we're just watching him normally develop, um, you know, uh, from that point of view. But physically, you can you can see you can't debate that he has got better. Definitely, the the enzyme has done something for Jesse because um, his heart is so badly damaged that if there wasn't enzyme now, 100% wouldn't wouldn't be here. Um, it's not made him any better, but it's stopped it progressing so fast. Yeah, definitely. If, he, if there was no Myzone, then there would be no Jesse. I wasn't aware just how much he knows um, until I watched him watch Astro Boy a few days ago. Um, there was a part where um, the little boy died in Astro Boy. He was, he was a robot, and the, and the, the, the man who was his dad um, gave him a magical heart to make him better. While Jesse was watching, he has control of his uh, PlayStation controller. He skipped it back about 20 times. I didn't know what he was doing it for until um, his heart rate was going high each time he was watching. He was watching that certain bit and it wasn't until mum said, if you watch what, what part he's watching, and I didn't understand until I saw him and he was getting upset and he was saying, um, for me to watch what was um, what's happening in the film, um, and the boy was given this magic heart and said he was made perfect again, and that kind of just broke my heart. That I didn't understand how much he knew about himself and how different he is, and he knows about his heart. And I'm aware now that people talk around him, and he picks even doctors and this. They talk about resuscitation and life expectancy I make, it made me realise now that he knows what exactly what they're talking about and, and people, what other people do come around and they say, oh, how long has he got to live and, and I have to say that please don't talk about that in front of him, he's not stupid he, he understands everything um, obviously we do, we're aware of gene therapy um, you know, stem cell research, all these other things that we know are uh, going on at the moment which aren't necessarily in use but um, yeah there certainly is hope for something I mean at the end of the day if we would have been given this diagnosis 10 years ago with our son they would have been saying to us to go home enjoy the time we've got and that would have been that so in that short amount of time there's already a treatment which is obviously helping these children to survive so in another 10 years time who knows it could be um, there could be anything, you know, so yeah, we're, def we're definitely hopeful of that. When um, Jesse was watching, well, I, I show him quite often other little kids. Um, he doesn't really pay attention, he's just whatever, he doesn't, doesn't care about pictures. When I put on the, um, the video of Phoenix, he was amazed. He didn't give my phone back, he just kept skipping it back and watching it over and over and over. When he was watching Phoenix in the bath, he was so excited because Phoenix could kick his legs around and I've noticed Jess, he tries really hard to put his, his legs in, but we've got a normal bath, it's not as wide as the bath uh, Phoenix had. And Jess was just crazy about this bath and kept watching it again and again. And he was saying to me, pointing his throne trackie and then pointing to Phoenix trackie to say they've got the same and that they were the same. And about uh, Phoenix trying to move his arms, um, his dad had put him in the standing frame and he was saying, come on Phoenix, lift your arms up. And Jesse was saying, yeah, come on. And he was trying to put his own arms up to show Phoenix this is how you do it. Um, and, he, and he was really excited about another child, the same. And he kept pointing to say, it's the same, it's the same as me. And that was quite emotional as well. It kind of made me see again that he understands he is different. You know, you just 
just don't know what something that might come out in another five years six years you know even to have mars on here today is is i don't know i can't explain it even with me i find it i find it very it's just too much to take in you know because if i was thinking nine years ago when i lost a son there was nothing and nine years on to have a son who's four years old to be doing so well it's just unbelievable my biggest hope is obviously is a, a cure that someone finds something amazing and just cure makes a cure for this horrible disease so we're, we've just finished our one year evaluation well we have next week will be the official end of one year uh, one month after he was a little bit stronger and then two to three months seemed to be his peak. His baseline, he was able to come off the ventilator for eight minutes. A month after that, I think it was uh, like 20 minutes or 25 minutes. And then after that, there was another uh, three month study. After three months, he was able to come off his ventilator for an hour and 20 minutes. And the last one was also an hour, about an hour and 20 minutes. Very similar, but kind of a plateau. And uh, you hear it a lot, but you know, without hope, you really don't have anything. So that's what the, the uh, huge importance of all of these uh, possible therapies that are out there is it gives you hope. And that's really all you need is a little light at the end of the tunnel, uh, something to aim for. And uh, if you have that, well, then it answers all of your questions. You just uh, keep striving for that. So that's what we're doing is striving for the, the light at the end of the tunnel.